Hey you guys, we are going to do some talk about my little project here because <laughs> I'm going to try to explain to you what I'm doing. Um, and it's all about Gideon and the story of Gideon. If you don't know his story, I'll talk about it some here, but if you'd like to read it for yourself, it is in Judges 6, 7, 8, and 9. And that sounds like a lot, but it's really not. And it's a fascinating story that's like TV movie worthy, you know, like maybe even big theater movie worthy. Yeah, big theater for sure, not just TV. So um, <laughs> it's a great story to read. Um, it just kind of keeps plugging along and um, it's just amazing. And the main theme that I pulled out of it when I got done reading all of those chapters was how intertwined Gideon was with God. Their, his whole life was quite imperfect, but in his best moments, and even at some of his more um, less best moments, some of his worst moments, he was there with God and God was kind to him and God showed mercy to him and God showed favor to him. And Gideon was kind of a nobody. He was from the small tribes. He wasn't one of the big tribes of Israel. And so um, I think that just gives us a lot of hope. So what I'm doing is I have these paper strips that um, are little strips of scrapbook paper that fit perfectly in the margin of the Bible. That's not what they were designed for, but um, I'm honestly not sure what they were designed for. <laughs> But um, I love them for Bible journaling. I found them at Hobby Lobby um, and they're sticky on the back. And so I'm weaving them together. I did this in my other Bible um, and I like it when it's um, using it for a verse that's really kind of standing out as something's intertwined or somebody's woven together or a place where we choose to weave ourselves into our faith or not or think, you know, kind of symbolic like that. And it's just, it was just so obvious that Gideon. Um, and God were so intertwined and um, that was the reason Gideon was able to accomplish his uh, calling was because he stayed connected to God. So I'm creating this weaving. Um, I don't know if it's going to make any sense on video but I just cut three strips in the blue paper and I shouldn't have taken the sticky off the back of that one. That made it a lot more complicated. So just if you have sticky paper just don't cut the sticky off. And then, but take the sticky off of the camo part that you're weaving horizontally because it will stick to the blue paper. So you just weave it under, over, under, over, under, over, and you just alternate. And you're seeing I'm trimming off the end when I get to the side. And then I start again on the left and under, over, under, over, over, under, over, under, um, until we get to the bottom. So it's a super simple technique. You can do it with any paper. You could even do it with ribbon if you were feeling really, um, uh, there's the paper. I thought you guys might want to know the name and what it looks like. Um, so you could like go to Hobby Lobby and try to find it. <laughs> I, I bought it a little bit ago, um, but it was in their scrapbook section and it didn't seem like it was like a clearance thing. It seemed like it was there for a while. It wasn't a clearance price. So um, there might be something like it still there. You can always take a screenshot of this <laughs> into Hobby Lobby and say, hey, do you guys still have this? Anyway, I used my 40% off coupon. So I ended up getting it for very, very little money. What would that be like $3, $4? Anyway, um, it's fun though. And you'll see it again because there's some nautical themes in there that I want to use <laughs> while I'm using this fun uh, nautical stamp set. So um, anyway, so the story of Gideon, um, you mostly hear about the story of Gideon's army. And what happens with Gideon's army is God calls him to overtake um, some of the uh, armies that were threatening Israel's safety. And this was really Gideon's life calling, was to be able to defeat these armies. And what God does is he takes a gazillion men, I think it even says that in the Bible, a gazillion men. <laughs> um, I guess actually right here, I'm looking at it. Um, I think he starts out with, oh goodness. Um, well, to put this in context, the Israelites were sorely outnumbered from the beginning. So this was quite a task to take on. And then, but it looks like 32,000 people came when Gideon called for the army to take 
on their adversaries. And then he said, if anybody's fearful and trembling, let them go away and go home. And only 10,000 men remained. And then the Lord said to Gideon, that's still too many people. Basically, you'll brag about this winning. You'll think that it was your own doing. So I'm going to make the army even smaller. So he has Gideon have these people do strange things, like not inappropriate, just weird. Like, why would God choose that? I don't know, but he did. He had them go through a couple of different tests and he whittled the army down to 300 men. 300. Now they're taking on huge, huge armies. So like this makes absolutely no sense. So uh, God knows that Gideon's probably uh, a little bit intimidated because their their story is kind of Gideon's afraid, then Gideon sees God and then he gets faith. Gideon's afraid, then he sees God move and then he gets faith. You know, like this is kind of the rhythm of Gideon's life. And it's so sweet because right here in chapter 7, verse 10, God tells him to go ahead and go down, for I've given you that camp into your hands. But if you are afraid, go down to the camp with with Perah, your servant, um, blah, blah, blah. And so he continues. But like even God is so sweet because he knew that Gideon would be afraid, right? <laughs> that Gideon would be like, um, you want me to sneak into this camp? and um, try to get insider information by myself. These guys are brutal. Um, and so God even provides a little buddy system for, for Gideon um, as backup, because he knew, he knows we're human, you guys, and that's like the good news. God knows that we're afraid and he knows why we're afraid. I mean, God wasn't stupid in doing this. He knew this would be a challenge. But he knew Gideon was up for the task if, if they would just stick in it together. Um, because God had the victory planned. God knew the ending of this story. He just needed Gideon to step up and be able to lead the army into the ending of this story and showing that God is good and God does deliver you from your enemies. So anyway, cool story that I just can't do justice in under 15 minutes here on YouTube. Um, but they end up winning. They defeat the military, uh, the armies that they're fighting with just their few hundred men. And it's a miracle. And the story goes on. And Gideon has a high moment where he people say, hey, be our leader, be our king. And he's like, no, no, you don't want a king. I'm not going to be your king. And then, um, so he, he, he gets it. You need to worship God, not me. But then he gets all the earrings from all the plunder. Um, and the earrings were worn in the pagan culture um, as a form of worship to the other gods. And so he gathers the earrings and he makes an ephod. And they're still not sure exactly what he made um, and exactly what the ephod was or even the intentions of it. Um, but the people ended up worshiping it instead of God. And it was kind of the downfall of the Israelites once again. So what I'm doing here, though, is I think what's significant, uh, well, there's a lot that's significant in this story, um, but one of the things that was significant is how many times God showed up for Gideon and how many times even Gideon asked things that other people didn't ask. Like, if you've ever heard of saying, somebody saying, like, I'm going to throw out a fleece on this one to see what God has to say, like, should we move or should we stay? Should I take the new job or should I not? I, you might hear the phrase, I'm going to throw out a fleece. Um, and that just means basically you're, you're telling God, okay, if you want me to do something over here, then you show a sign in this way. And this is where all that comes from. So if you've heard somebody say, well, I threw out a fleece. Like if we were supposed to move, I asked God to sell our house by the end of the month or whatever. That's, that's calling out a fleece and putting a fleece before God because you're asking him with your instructions to show you exactly what he wants you to do. That can be looked at at a couple of different ways. One, um, and it wasn't real clear what the scholars were saying about Gideon, whether it was um, a lack of faith and Gideon wanted to have God prove himself more than he had already done um, because he'd already told Gideon he was going to win this battle. You're called to this battle, you're going to win this battle. But then Gideon asked God, he threw out a fleece twice to God. It could have been to show God's power and Gideon could have known that. 
could have been because Gideon was scared and he wanted God to give him more proof, um, wanted reassurance, uh, a little bit of both, knowing, um, looking at Gideon's whole life um, about being afraid and faithful, which is what I'm putting over here in the margin. Um, it was probably a little bit of both, at least it would be in my life. Um, and so what, um, what all those knots are for that I stamped down on the page are in just these two pages of text. So this only covers part of chapter six and chapter seven and a teeny bit of chapter eight. So there's more story on the backsides of both of these pages. Those are all the times God and Gideon were intertwined together for God's purposes. How cool is that? And that's for me and that's for you. It's not just for Gideon because we all have a calling and God does not expect us to do it on his own. So intertwine yourself with him today. You guys ask him what he wants you to do and then take a step of faith because he's not going to let you fall. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.